Tires! Who doesn't love tires? They take on a lot of abuse in understanding and mounting the right tire before a race like the Tour Divide or a route like the Eastern Divide is important. Okay, I can't hold these anyway. Ooh, mixed terrain routes that have some rough, some pavement, and some gravel make it difficult to choose. You want enough volume for those rough stretches, but not too much volume where the tire starts to bog you down. So in this video, I'm gonna share some thoughts on what I look for in a tire for these specific routes, and I'm gonna share some options out there. Let's do it. So if you find any of our videos useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss any. And if you want to help us out a little bit more, you can join the Bikepacking Collective, which is an annual membership through bikepacking.com. Included in the Bikepacking Collective is you're automatically signed up to win monthly giveaways. You get first dibs on all of the items in our web store. And twice a year, you get the Bikepacking Journal, a print publication. Inside the third volume, there's a surprise gift, a map of the Great Divide mountain bike route, which is pretty incredible. So there's a link below with more information on the Bikepacking Collective. And as always, thank you all so much for the support. So talking about some characteristics that I look for specifically in these tires. As far as width is concerned, I'm looking for a tire from two inches all the way to a 2.35. If I was to do the Tour Divide again, it would definitely be on a 2.2 inch tire on a 28 millimeter internal width rim. So here's why though, that specific width is great for that rough terrain, that unknown terrain, yet it's still narrow enough that it rolls really well on say pavement. And a larger volume tire actually means more comfort, which is definitely welcomed when you're riding your bike two, three, four weeks at a time. Sure, you could run a 700 by 42 millimeter tire and you probably wouldn't be underbiked all that often, but when you would, it's definitely going to be a lot slower. And in general, it's going to be a lot more challenging on the body over that long period of time. And then on the flip side of that, running a bigger volume tire. Sure, that might be more comfortable, especially over the long haul, but then we're talking about rolling resistance and those tires actually slowing you down a little bit more. So that two to 2.35 range is definitely the best of both worlds. And there are a ton of tire options to choose from in that category. So now talking about durability a little bit. So tire failure is simply a bummer, but it happens from time to time. And I actually did a really in-depth video on tire repair, trailside tire repair, and that's linked below, or you can click this card right here. When I'm looking for the proper tire for this specific ride, I'm looking for one that has durable casing. So something that goes from sidewall to sidewall all the way throughout the whole tire or from bead to bead. Essentially, this is an additional layer of protection on the tire. So for example, Terravel has their durable casing and Maxxis has their EXO or EXO Plus. As opposed to say Terravel's light and supple, the light and supple is going to be a lot lighter, but it's not going to be nearly as durable. So yes, in general, it will increase the weight of the tire and more than likely reduce the suppleness or the supple ride quality of that tire. But for me, it's an easy price to pay for peace of mind. And talking about weight a little bit, 800 grams or lower is a good weight for these tires. And then finally, yes, you will definitely wanna make sure that you have a tubeless tire especially if you have a tubeless compatible rim. Most tires these days almost all come tubeless compatible because, well, the ride quality is so much better. And I mentioned this in my tubeless tire install video, which is linked below. But in general, it is going to reduce weight of your bike going tubeless. It's going to definitely help with punctures. And yes, it's actually going to help create a more comfortable ride quality. All right, so the third and potentially most important characteristic I look for in a tire is tread. There are so many different tread patterns for manufacturers out there, it really is hard to choose. So hopefully I can give you a little bit of clarity on what works best for these routes, but in the end, it definitely is personal preference. I personally like to run a tire that has more of an aggressive knob or tread pattern to it, which ultimately just gives me a greater sense of confidence. So what I look for specifically though is almost a continuous center tread that has rather firm compound 
with a medium or shallow knob to it. And then as far as the side knobs, I look for treads that are a little bit more aggressive and that come with a little bit of a softer rubber compound. So let's just compare these two tires. Pretty drastic differences here. This is the Minion DHF and this is the Ardent Race. Both of these tires are made by Maxxis, but they are completely different in the way of the compound. So this Minion, it comes with this compound that basically is much softer, that flexes or conforms to the earth below so that it can really grip uh, at high speeds when you're on single track, loose over hard and even wet conditions. Whereas this Ardent Race comes with this center tread here that is a lot firmer. This is the 3C Max Speed compound. So it holds up really well. And to compensate, Max just adds a little bit of siping in the center tread here so that it can conform a little bit more to the earth. Something I really pay attention to is that height of that center tread. So making sure that it's actually taller than those side lugs so that you don't have that rolling resistance. And it's also nice because when you actually wear down that center tread, it's not going to be completely bald after 2,700 miles. So the last characteristic, well, maybe isn't a characteristic, but it's reliability. Brand trust, the tires that you've used, the success you've had on those tires, should not be ignored. I typically find myself using a tire from a brand that I've had success with in the past that hasn't necessarily failed me, and I stick with that instead of trying new things. While I do like to try new things, especially on a ride like the Tour Divide, using something that you're comfortable with is extremely important. So that's a great segue. Let's talk about some brands and their tires. First off, it's extremely important to me to give a big acknowledgement to WTB. WTB helped create the 29 wheel platform and they created the first tire design in the Nano Raptor. I actually have a great link below from Guitar Ted who basically outlines the history of 29 and how it started, the development and all that. So that's linked below and it's a great read if you're interested in that. So because of WTB's reputation and their proven nano design, that tire was extremely popular in the early days for the Tour Divide. In 2008, Matthew Lee won the Tour Divide on the WTB Nano, finishing in just under 20 days. And after that, the Nano became an extremely popular tire on the Tour Divide. Today, WTB still makes the Nano. It's a 2.1 inch tire. It comes with this nearly continuous center tread, which when you're riding on the middle of the tire, it feels like a slick paired with that hard rubber compound. And then when you roll it over to the side, it's got that softer medium lug rubber that hooks up really well. The Nano open doors and you'll see a trickle down with some other tread patterns that we'll talk about today. Another great option is the WTB Ranger and the Ranger comes in kind of all shapes and sizes from a 2.8 all the way down to a 2.25. I would definitely rock that 29 by 2.25 in the TCS tough, fast rolling compound. All right, so talking about Maxxis options now. So what I look for in a Maxxis tire specifically is the EXO sidewall. And the EXO sidewall is the best kind of balance between durable sidewall and weight. The other thing I'm looking for is that 3C max speed that I talked about before. It's going to be the best rubber compound, the fastest rubber compound for what we're doing. And the final thing is tubeless compatible. Yes, Maxxis still makes tires that are not tubeless compatible and you'll be able to know that they're not tubeless compatible by the price, they're a lot cheaper. So for me, I'm looking for a tire that is tubeless compatible. So the tire that I used for the Tour Divide in 2015 was actually recommended by Hefe Branham, and that was the Maxxis Crossmark. And the Maxxis Crossmark is a unique tire because it comes with these squared center treads that work extremely well when you're rolling just straight, but those shoulder and side lugs are a lot more aggressive for that rough terrain. That tire worked extremely well for me. It helped me gain confidence on the chunky sections and I didn't have to replace it the whole trip. So another one is the Maxxis Icon. This is a fantastic tire for not only the Tour Divide, Great Divide mountain bike route, but also just cross country mountain biking. And this tire actually comes in a variety of different sizes as well. This is the 2.2 inch variety. And this tire just rolls. It rolls extremely well straight, but it also rolls really well when you're cornering. Even though these lugs are small, they're hard, they're durable, and well, they just last. And then finally, talking about the Ardent Race tire. This is specifically the 2.35 inch variety. 
but they also make a 2.2 inch variety. And not only is this one of my favorite just overall tires for bike packing, uh, for mountain biking, the Ardent Race is aggressive enough for any of the chunk on the Great Divide mountain bike route yet it still rolls extremely well. All right, so next up is Terravel, and Terravel has two specific tires in this category, the Rutland and the Sparwood. So starting with the Sparwood, the Sparwood is designed around this diamond tread pattern. It's got a raised center tread so that it rolls extremely well. And then when you do corner on the sides, these diamonds are supposed to conform around any of the ground that you're rolling over. So while this tire doesn't necessarily have those side lugs that we saw on some of the other tires, this tire is made to go a little bit more straight, but it is extremely fast. This tire does come in that durable casing that we mentioned. It also comes in the light and supple, but it also comes in 27.5 and 29 inch wheel diameters. And then released early last year, the Terraval Rutland. This is another great option. It's got these ramped center treads, so it rolls extremely well. It's got these nice evenly spaced transition lugs. This tire comes with Terraval's fast compound and that durable casing. It also is available in 27.5 and 29, and it comes in a nice 2.2 inch variety. So if you're deciding between the two tires, you know, the Sparwood, it's basically an oversized gravel tire. It doesn't do the best job of hooking up in really chunky conditions or really loose gravel. Whereas the Rutland's more defined tread gives me a greater sense of confidence. All right, so now talking about the Victoria Mezcal. This is a tire that I actually haven't been on yet, but I really, really wanna try out. This tire is hands down one of the most popular tires for the Tour Divide. And you'll notice this in our Rigs of the Tour Divide article, which is going to be published on June 9th. Victoria uses their alternating center ridge tread pattern, which rolls extremely well. And then their transition lugs come with siping, which help just conform that specific tread to the ground. And in general, this tire looks fantastic for the divide in that 2.2 inch category, but it's available in a 2.6 or 2.35. And I do think that WTB Nano might've had something to do with this design. And if I was to buy a set, I would go with their TNT casing, which is their most durable in the 2.25 inch category. So then finally we have the Rene Airs Fleecer Ridge tire, which comes out to a 2.2 inch tire. It's available in four different casings. This is the endurance casing, and that's the casing I would probably go with. There is an, I think an ultra endurance casing if you wanted something a little bit more bomber. But this tire is unique because it has these strategically placed treads throughout the tire. So when you're rolling on the tire itself, it almost feels like you're on a slick tire. Even when you're cornering, the tire is extremely fast. But when you do get off road and you're riding on some more rough terrain, it definitely hooks up. If you wanna learn more about this tire, I did a full video review on the Fleecer Ridge and that's linked below. This tire also won gear of the year on bikepacking.com's gear of the year awards. So picking just one tire out of this group is not easy, but if I had to pick one right now, it would probably be the Fleecer Ridge. This tire is extremely reliable. It's seen over 2000 miles of use already. It has quite a bit of life left to it. It rolls extremely well, it hooks up well, and it breaks well. So all of those characteristics kind of come together to create this great tire for these specific routes. Obviously there are a lot more tire options out there. Continental has the Race King, Specialized has the Fast Track. So I'm really curious now to hear what specific tire you're using for the Great Divide mountain bike route, the Tour Divide, or in general, these these mixed terrain routes that are rather fast. Leave a comment in the comment section below with your choice, especially if I haven't touched on that specific tire today. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.